All right. Today we're here with Lori Ju. Lori Ju, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, uh, you know, where you're from? Yep. So my name is Lori Ju. That's my stage name. Um, uh, I'm an artist from Boston, Massachusetts, and I also am a fitness and health guru. That's what most people know me as, and they see me in the streets, and that's what they usually stop and talk to me about. Now it's more music because I've been putting out a lot of heat, but before that, it was like, Jew, you're vegan. Tell me something. Jew, your body's so nice. How do you do that? So, yeah. Okay, well, so let's talk about that transition from Jew to Lord Jew. Where, okay. what, what, what inspired that? No, well, I always, I always did music. I have like an, a good ear for music. My grandfather um, taught me how to play the violin at a young age. Then mm -hmm. I kind of taught myself how to play the piano and just playing around with beats and doing things like that. Mm -hmm. Started writing and, you know, just fooling around, freestyling with friends and like kind of like battle rapping with friends. Yeah. Um, probably around like 14, 15, I recorded my first song, 16, 17, I remember it was like my senior, either my, so my, my junior year into my senior or my senior year into the end of my senior year in okay. high school, I recorded my first song <clears throat> and I just, I kind of got a little discouraged because, you know, I didn't really like how I sounded. I wanted to sound great off the rip. I didn't really think about, you know, you have to practice and you have to work on how you sound and my voice is kind of deep anyway so I always was a little bit insecure about that so yeah. when I heard myself after I first recorded myself I was like no nah, I'm not doing this no more but even after that and before that people would always tell me like oh you got a dope voice the way that you talk is really dope the way you carry yourself is really dope you should rap you should rap you should rap like people was always feeding me that so then um last year I don't know it was just like I was just kind of disappointed and and how rap was being portrayed by certain people, not everybody, there's a lot of dope artists out there, but there was just, I feel like there's more, is people glorify more of like the, the trash, the whack stuff. So it's just like the people that are really good that are, have actually have the passion for it should be doing it, you know? Okay, let's talk about that a little bit. What is, what is rap to you uh, specifically? Like what, what separates the trash from the real? <laughs> I mean, I feel like everybody, that does music should have their own story and should have something that people can relate to, not just doing what everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's like, if, if I rap and I'm talking about what I'm talking about and people can relate to it, mm -hmm. but you rap and you're only talking about what is cool right now to rap about, then I don't think that that, like it, it, it could sound good, but is it good music to me? No. Um, yeah. And that's just what it is to me. I don't. I don't knock anybody. I. I. I hope everybody does good or whatever. Whatever. At the same time, it's just like it's kind of not fair to the people that are actually really good and actually have a story to tell and actually want to encourage and inspire people to do something mm -hmm. different. Okay. So, how, how do you feel about the current? I mean, who are you listening to and who do you avoid? Who do I avoid? I don't avoid anybody. I. I mm -hmm. still give the trash a chance. You know what I'm saying? Because I still. <laughs> you know, I still have hope. You know what I'm saying? Because like, everybody, I feel like the, the best part about music or any career that you have, but art itself is growth. You know what I'm saying? You start here and a, and a year from now, two years from now, you're so much better. You're, you're just a whole different person. So I, I feel like that's important. Um, I listen to, I listen to everybody, you know, um, I really like J. Cole. I really like, you know, the Goat Hove. Um, I like Meek. I like, I like Nikki, of course. I like most of the new girls. I like Dreezy. I like um, who out of the new girls do I like? Uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Hey. I like um, just anybody that like really be rapping. Like if you yeah. rapping and you got your flow was in pocket, you could tell that you've been working on what you're doing. Then, then I could fuck with it. You know. Okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Definitely like Megan Thee Stallion. That's something that are someone I've been you know kind of watching. Uh, it's maybe yeah, she's dope. Yeah. Yeah, her on uh, the double XL is pretty exciting. I'm excited to see what she does with that. But uh, so, how has uh, you know being in Boston? How has that kind of affected you, or, or you know, affected your style, or your sound? Um, I don't think that my actual city in uh, affected my style. Okay. But being here and growing up here, obviously is where like 
my roots are and you know mm-hmm. what I have when I talk about certain things and when I rap about certain things that have affected me a lot of it comes from where I'm from so that has to do with it my style style wise I don't I don't know like you, I feel like someone else will have to listen to my music and tell me but I don't really think I have like it would definitely be like a like an east coast east, northeast yeah. sound um uh, I wouldn't say it's a, even a New York sound because I don't think I sound like I'm from New York but a lot of people do that are not from the east coast um but but yeah I feel like I sound a lot different than a lot of people. That's just that's just me. Yeah, you kind of have you know like the boss boss woman boss girl whatever attitude you know like the like you right. your own own you know your shit. Which is, right. I like it. I fuck with it. Which also reminds me of Megan Thee Stallion. Right. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I get compared to her a lot recently. Yeah. Recently, even though, even though I don't think that we sound the same. Or I sound the same, but you guys have the same kind of you know. That same kind of vibe, you know, the same kind of like yeah. the big, big boss in the room, you know, that kind of right. thing. Which, yeah, you know, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of boss, you know, kind of vibe, let's talk about this EP that you just dropped, the Boss Talk, boss talk EP. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk to the creative process a little bit about that? No. First of all, did you listen to it? Of course I listened to it on the EP. I had to listen to it. What? Do what, you like it? what? Do you like it? I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Favorite choice being Hello. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, of course I, I fucked with it. That's why I'm invited you on here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you just found me and I don't know. Yeah. Everybody finds me through different ways. So if you found me from my EP, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. So the creative process. Um, I started recording my first song on that EP was Down On Me, which is the last track. Mm-hmm. Um, I recorded that song last year, November. Okay. Um, I was just, I was just in the studio, just recording, getting beats and recording, and whatever songs that I liked the best is what I threw on there. The last song on there that I just finished was um, "Let You Tell It," the second track. <clears throat> so it was like November, down on me. I did "Hello" was probably next. What else is on there? Um, Dash on me, bust it, cheat code, and then let you tell it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, pretty much in that order. But even in between those songs, I was recorded a whole bunch of other songs. I got a whole, I have a whole catalog, probably like a hundred, hundred songs, and I picked those and put those on there. Um, so, it, I'm sorry, keep going. No, I was gonna say it was. It wasn't really like I had the concept and the idea, and then I put the songs. It was just I picked what songs I like. I picked. The, the the name of it through what how I felt from it. I had a different name before, but okay. people didn't like it. So nowadays, when I pick something, I'm not going to tell anybody because <laughs> I'll, I'll keep switching. It's just like, oh, these two people like it, but this the person doesn't like it. So now I got to switch. This person likes it. So that's how stuff usually goes with when I pick, you know, names and, and visuals and stuff like that. It's just like two out of three or four out of five. And then I'm stuck with that last person that doesn't like it. And I'm just like, why don't you like it? And I'm so now I stick to who, my my small little team, and then we all gotta come together and come to an agreement, and then that's it. Like I'm not sending it to any everybody to get their approval. My friends, I'm not getting my friends' approval no more. You know okay. what I'm saying? I send them my music because I obviously want to know their opinion, but when it comes to like names and visuals, it's like no, you guys are too picky, and no. <laughs> <laughs> so I just you stick to you and your team, and that's your team. Right. Comes- well, what does it even cover, like, things like music videos? So it would, I would do my producer, my main producer, International Show, who did um, Busted Dash and Down On Me. He mixed, okay. mastered, recorded, and made the beats for those. And, and he's an artist. He's really dope. Um, so I get his opinion on names and titles. I'll get my managers, and then I'll get my, what would it be? What is he like? He's, he's trying to start a label with me, so I guess he would be the CEO. Okay. And he's like kind of the money behind everything and stuff like that. He's trying to start a label through or yeah. through. It's interesting. He's trying mm-hmm. to start a label. Yep. Could you talk about that a little bit? Right. Um, I can't just because I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, it's just interesting, you know. Just someone that you know has some money, believes in me, and he wants to do this. He wants to get out of trouble because he gets in a lot of trouble here and there. He wants to, you know 
put his put his money in the right direction and 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 flip it and get it back and make everybody happy and make some good music and do some cool things in the process. Uh, that's good. It's good that you're in that position. You know. Thank you. Uh, I trust that. I'm waiting for that. So another thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, or one of the things I noticed, especially before this interview really started, is that you have an insane amount of tattoos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just like all over. I mean, like right right now with the arm. How many tattoos? Do you have? Do you know? I have, uh, I think, 26, 25 or 26. 25 or um, 26? As well as music, art. I, I am an artist. I draw. Okay. So with that, with the music stuff, I was always drawing cartoons and making my own comics when I was younger and mm -hmm. started drawing on my own skin. I was just like, I should do tattoos. So I, sh I started doing tattoos around like 16, illegally. Don't tell nobody. Um, <laughs> like from a tattoo? I was tattooing everybody in the hood. So people would probably know me like, oh, you did my tat. People say that all the time. Like, oh, I like your music. Just FYI, you did my first tat and blah, 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 blah. You were tattooing people. I was tattooing people. I did a few of my own. I did a couple of the names. I did the ones on my hands. So how did you How did you do this? Did you have like the whole needle? I bought the gun. I bought the, the, the ink. I bought everything. Um, I, did, I went to the, my artist that was doing me. And I, I asked him some advice. He gave me some advice. It was kind of, it was mostly like trial and error. I was doing it on myself, doing it on my brother until I got better at it. Um, and then, yeah, I was, I was making money. I was making a lot of money. I was doing a lot of parties. Yeah. And just, it was just, but it, it was getting way too illegal. Like someone, I did someone underage that I didn't know and that her mom called the cops. And it was just like, nah, I can't do this no more. It was either get my license or I can't do it no more. And I didn't have the money to get my license or the time because you got to put like 3,000 hours in. Jeez. I got you. Yeah, that's, so. a, that's, that's a hustle. So you said you're doing it at parties. Like you would post up shop or set up shop at a party and just... Yep. Just do? bang it out. $40 a piece. That's wild. 40, minimum $40 a piece. I would walk out of there with like six, seven hundred, six, seven hundred dollars a night for a party. Damn. It was I crazy. Good not. times, good times. I wish I saved yeah. that money. <laughs> so what are the like you said you have some on your hands like what are the yeah. you know like I got music notes on my hands okay That's I got this before Chris Brown so whatever <laughs> <laughs> I got 617 that's the area code I, I did this, this was like a cover up from um, a messed up one that I got and then I covered it but gotcha. it's faded so you can't really tell what it is so I gotta get it either redone or covered up again okay I got my mom's name on my wrist got my dad's name on my other wrist what else did I do? I did one on my leg, but you can't see I got shorts on. Yeah. Um, yeah. All anything that I could reach, I I pretty much did. Oh, I did this one on my finger right here, this wing. That's crazy. And I guess you know, I mean, I'm not too confused in my head, so like the pain really isn't too much of an issue. Maybe like the first time you get it, but when you're I mean, it, you're you don't have it, none. Oh. What's that? You don't have none. I got like maybe four. Like I'm trying to go asleep, so I got maybe four yeah. right now. But, uh, you know, it's down maybe, like, a couple inches above my elbow from my shoulder. So, I've, you know, I've been getting tattoos. Yeah, my half a sleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, like, the pain is, like, something, it's not, it's not much after the first, like, five, ten minutes. But when you're doing it yourself, that seems like something that's, you know, that's going to hurt. Like, how, does that not mess you up? Or did that it not does. mess you up? It does, because you don't know if you're trying to not hurt yourself or if you're mm -hmm. trying to do it right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you obviously have to go a certain amount of deep into the skin and if it's like if it's hurting it's hurting i'm hurting myself so yeah. your natural instincts you don't want to hurt yourself so you might pull it out a little bit that's why a lot of them are faded and light because i didn't go deep enough because mm -hmm. it's my own skin but i i did it wow that's awesome the mean, wrist one the wrist one doesn't hurt so that was easy no. but the, the hand that's why the hand yeah. is so faded because i i just could not get it deep enough in there so i gotta get that done over. yeah that's how it can Painful. That and the one I think you had, like, right here, kind of on your knuckle. The finger, yeah. The finger was bad, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, one more thing I just wanted to touch up on, because I wanted to add this to the video, is mm -hmm. what? Do you have these, like, two videos? Uh, they're PSAs, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> addressing, uh, about being friends and pretty much how to slide into your DMs. Now, I honestly, like, that was probably some of the funniest shit I've seen, maybe for the past <laughs> week or two. You do your research. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> That's important. But what, you know, let's go into detail, but have you had, like, is this, like, still an issue for you of just, like, people just being mad, ignorant, 
any DMs? Um, of course. And you, you know, the internet is a whole different world that I'm I'm starting to, you know, come into accept acceptance with. Like it's not real life, you know, yeah. people are not who they say they are. And even if I you are who you say you are, you might even still portray yourself or have a little bit more courage or less courage on the internet you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so it's like the, all the people that would slide in my dms probably 10 percent of them would actually come up to me and talk to me with the boldness that they had in my dm <laughs> so it's like it's a joke you can't take none of that shit serious like i try to still be optimistic and give people a chance and be nice but at the same time it's just like i can't talk to all y'all like i'm not i can't do that like, I got it's you. It's a mess. I got you. So my DMs are in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> that was honestly some of the funniest, like the one of the funniest. You should follow me on Snapchat. I'm I'm really funny. <laughs> Snapchat? Yeah. What's Snapchat your... Lord you. L O R D J U. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I mean, Twitter. Really my Twitter is Plant Bay Jew. Plant P L A N T Bay B A E J U J U. That's my Twitter. Okay, uh, but yeah, I'm really funny and active on Snapchat. I don't, I don't put as much as ever my personality on Instagram. I try to keep that as professional as possible, even though yeah. my personality is part of my profession. But my Snapchat is just all, <laughs> all, all in. Crazy. Okay, all, all the funny stuff. So, uh, you know, so dive into what you have planned in for you know the future. Any plans for you know, after Boss Talk? Yeah, so I'm I'm on the works of another EP. Okay. Um, you are the first outsider to know of this. Oh. I'm not gonna tell you the name, but I have the name. Okay. And it's more so. So I kind of did boss talk, boom, 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 and then the last song is more of like a little bit R and B wave because I'm singing on it, and it's more you know sassy and not less aggressive a lot of the guys really like that they were, uh, that's a lot of the feedback that i got like i like all of them but down on me was really different i got to see a, sub a submissive side of you and i like that blah 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 so um even before they even said that i was thinking about doing this anyways so my next one's gonna be on like that wave like more the girly side of me you know the in love the heartbreak the um, the whole shit but like <laughs> sexy whole shit Okay. And then, so yeah, so that's my next one. It's gonna be more so singing and and submissive, girly, and do you less have any, aggressive. Uh, I mean, I don't want to dig too deep into it, but do you have any kind of like you know, you had music videos uh, for Boss Talk? You want to have any kind of content like that for so coming? Yeah, so we're gonna shoot for. I want to shoot three, but I don't know if I have enough time to shoot three and put it out and push them and promote them mm -hmm. in time for Sweet. I almost told you the name. <laughs> in time for the next EP because I want to drop the next EP before the year is over. And it's, since it's like R&B vibes, I want to put it out for cuffing season. So it's like yeah. November. Yeah. It's like the latest, maybe like first week of December. So yeah, I want to drop three videos off of Boss Talk. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll be looking out for that for sure. Uh, so... I think that's it, unless you have anything else you want to shout out. Uh, actually, there is one thing that I do want to shout out. Uh, you have a friend that needs some help, right? And, you know, if you have a message that you want to share or that you want to share that message, please do. Yeah, so my friend, Sliver, is failing her. She's in very critical condition. She's very sick. She's in the hospital. I'm going to go see her after this conversation okay. um and she needs a new liver she needs a liver transplant and that shit is not cheap it's like forty thousand maybe fifty thousand dollars um her gofundme is in my um my link in my bio i don't know how to link it to this or anything but if you okay. go to my page and if you follow me or whatever if you just go check me out make sure you go donate and share we appreciate everything we need as much help as we can get to save my friend Okay, I'll be sure to get that in the uh, article or the GoFundMe link in the article. Thank you. All right, well, that's all we have unless there's anything else you want to shout out real quick. Um, I already shouted out my producer. Shout out to my producer. Shout out to everybody that I got on my EP that worked with me, that reaches out to me, that supports me. Um, shout out to G.O.D. He's on Cheat Code, Dope Song. We're going to shoot a video for that. Shout out to Don DZ, Dope Artist from Cambridge, Dope Song. Um, and shout out to just all the females, you know, 
that look up to me that that share my music that give me their support that are nice and friendly being nice is really important i feel like people are not as nice as they should be nowadays and i just appreciate any type of niceness and support that i get because you know i'm good and i deserve it everybody <laughs> deserves it but the good people deserve it well, you know it's nice to feel appreciated so right exactly uh, okay, well, Lord Ju, we want to end it off with one last question, philosophical question, mm -hmm. as you think. Uh, just a little bit. It what, better not be, where do I see myself in five years? No, 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 no. no <laughs> you deeper than that. What do you believe is a human right? Give me one. You should have never ended it on this, because <laughs> I can go on for so long. Um... <laughs> We'll have a part two. Like basic human rights, you know, <clears throat> being able to do what you feel without harming anybody or anything or, you know, being destructive, mm -hmm. um, being able to express yourself without harming anybody or, you know, anything. And, um, yeah, being able to openly be yourself, you know, just being, yeah. being able to be yourself without being scared. I feel like that's the most important one. You know, a lot of people are scared mm -hmm. to be who they are because of how society is. And it's just like, if, if we all respected human rights, then we wouldn't, it wouldn't be like that. But we have human rights, but nobody respects it really much because we have human rights, but there's those little things like, oh no, but you can't be gay. Oh no, but you can't be black. Oh no, but your hair can't, you know what I'm saying? So it's just mm -hmm. like, my human right is I should be able to walk into work like this without no white people telling me some shit about my hair. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I, I talk about that a lot. I rant about that a lot because I get that a lot and it's so annoying and frustrating. And it's just like, this is how my hair grew out of my head. I don't understand why you're asking me questions about it. I don't ask you questions about your limp, greasy, lifeless, blonde, melanin, lacking hair. So please do not ask. Just say it looks nice or whatever the fuck. Like, that's it. Every time, every time, there's gonna be a white person today at the hospital. I bet you any money is gonna comment on my hair, and it's just like, Dang. if I if I retaliate and say something, I'm the bad guy though. It's because yep. they're ignorant, but I'm the bad guy. So it's not called the cops. But hey, I digress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I appreciated you taking taking the time. This has been a lot of fun talking to you. Thanks for uh, you know coming on board for the show. Thank you for reaching out, and you know. Fucking with the real. They're still real out here. Keep doing your thing. I support you. Um, DM me so I can find you and add you. And, you know, for sure. For sure. Give you all this loving. All right. I appreciate it. Well, all right. that's all we got.